Hello, welcome back to the programme. Now, if you are worrying that perhaps robots are, are going to take over from you, you shouldn't actually because they are already here. Uh, artificial intelligence agents are already involved in every aspect of our lives. They keep our inboxes free of spam. They help us uh, make our web transactions. They fly our planes. It's all potentially scary if uh, you think about it in those terms. But what are the benefits as well? Well, the BBC is bringing you stories about advances in artificial intelligence and robotics and what they could mean for us all. Let's go to the real uh, deal. Spencer Kelly, who's there with uh, some of the people who may eventually be taking over. Spencer. Thank you very much. And uh, everybody, meet Baxter. Baxter. Everybody, Baxter is a research robot, but it's already being used in industry to do things that we humans might do with our arms and our fingers. In a few minutes, I'm going to show Baxter how to do an important part of my job, which is pick up this egg and drop it in the pan. That's what I do when I'm not on click for most of the week. Um, Nigel Crook is from Oxford Brookes University. Um, you brought Baxter in today, and you're actually using Baxter for research purposes to study machine-human interaction. Yes, uh, specifically we're looking at collaboration, when a human and a robot work together to solve a problem. OK, and, and what have you found regarding how we like dealing with robots, and, and more specifically, who we like to be in charge, us? Or the robots. Well, the, usually there are two strategies you can adopt when you're collaborating with someone. Do you take the lead in the collaboration or do you follow the other person's lead? And what we're interested in is studying how those changes, those different strategies, can have an impact on uh, a person who's interacting with the robot. OK, and your research is still ongoing. What is your feeling about whether we like to be in charge or whether we like to be led by a robot? I think that uh, when a robot is in charge and taking the lead, often we feel a little bit unsafe and out of control. And the best strategy in my gut feel at the moment is a mixture of the two, when the robot intelligently sometimes takes the lead and sometimes follows. OK, the irony being, of course, we hand over a lot of control to computers already that we don't even yes. realise in aircraft and, and many li li uh, lines of uh, our daily lives. Right, now I'm going to teach Baxter how to drop this egg into the pan. So if we start recording, it's now looking at what I'm doing, and I can actually, if I grab it here, I can take Baxter's hand, anything could happen here, because it is live TV, I'm going to place the hand over here, press its fingers together, and then show it. On the way past, I'm going to give it a little flourish, just to show you it really is watching what I'm doing, and then it's going to release the egg into the pan, and then finish like that. Right, now it should copy what I've done. And this is an example of a different way of programming a computer. So instead of typing in computer code, you actually show it what you want it to do. Oh, we need to put the egg back in the, back in the box. Well spotted, Nigel. That could have been a disaster. We could have been eggless. So you see, it's, it's replicated my moves exactly, even the hesitancy which, with which I approach the egg. There's the flourish. Proof. If proof were needed, and the eggs in the pan. So, Nigel, in no way is this artificial intelligence. This is me just programming a robot. But yeah. there are hints of intelligence about what Baxter can do, aren't there? Yes, and it, this is an example of what you can do to help it to learn. So we've given it a very precise set of movements now. Um, but in a factory setting, for example, there will be a lot of variability. If it's picking things off a conveyor belt, they won't always be in the same place. So it needs to learn the variability and to adapt to different situations doing the same task. So you would show it lots of the same task but in slightly different situations? That's right. And it would spot the common things yes. that are happening? Yes, and, and, and then when it meets a new situation that it, that it hasn't seen before, it should be able to apply what it's learnt to do the same task then. Um, there are robotics and there are artificial intelligence systems. They're not always the same. What no. would you define as artificial intelligence? My definition of artificial intelligence is um, a system where doing a task where you would normally assume uh, intelligence was required to solve that on the part of a human and being. And then what would you class as, I'm not going to let you get away with that, what would you <laughs> class as intelligence? So <clears throat> intelligence is general, a, a general ability to uh, solve a problem um, or address a situation using knowledge, using learning, being adaptable and being able to predict outcomes and so on. So it's a collection of things rather than just one thing. And so not just programming a computer to be able to handle a certain situation, yeah. but actually 
itself learning from whether it gets it right or exactly. wrong. Yep. Um, of course, there's a lot of talk about artificial intelligence threatening people's jobs. Yes. Do you think we should be worried about that, and do you think it's already happening? Uh, no, I don't think we should be worried about that. I think history shows that where AI and robots have come into organizations and industries um, to take jobs that were pre previously done by human beings, in actual fact, that's created greater productivity, greater efficiency in the company, and those people who were doing those jobs are redeployed to other jobs. But of course, historically, company. you don't need as many people. When you're True. supervising an army of 100 robots, you maybe need one or two True. people. Yes. What do you do with the other 98 that were replaced? But again, they are redeployed, and that is, that's the pattern that has been used in industry in the past. OK, Nigel, thank you very much. Uh, we're back here throughout the day, but from Nigel, myself and Baxter, it's back to the studio. Was that egg uh, fresh or was it hard-boiled? Uh, no, that's me being... Uh, um, that's me being... Me. <laughs> it's rubber, actually, I have to tell you. Um, health and safety, we had to fill in too many forms at the BBC otherwise. God, I didn't expect the answer to be that, Spencer.